Hi everyone, it's Professor Permington. In this video, we're going to finish up our discussion on the derivative. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the derivative using the limit definition for the derivative, and then also to identify locations of non-existence of a derivative at a point. So let's pick up where we left off in the previous video. In the previous video, we talked about calculating the derivative using the limit definition for the derivative, using the limit of the difference quotient. So we had this definition. If f prime of x was the derivative, it was the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So we're going to be using this definition for the derivative to calculate the derivative for various functions. So in this video, we're going to talk about the process for finding the derivative of a function using the limit of the difference quotient. And then we're going to be able to use the derivative to calculate the slope of a tangent line at a point that is on the curve. All right, example six, limit of a difference quotient. Find the derivative for the following functions. And we're going to do several of these. Use the derivative to find the slope of the tangent line at the indicated point. So number one, the function is f of x equals negative six, and we want to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals four. So notice that this function is always y equals negative six. The y value is always negative six, no matter what the x value is. So this is called a constant function because the function is just a constant, negative six. So the derivative, the derivative of f of x, it's using this definition. f prime of x is the limit as h approaches zero of the difference quotient. f of x plus h, subtract f of x, all divided by h. So let's see what we get for the difference quotient if we actually have this function. So if you're plugging in x plus h, well, there is no x to plug into for this function, so the y value is negative six. Subtract f of x, that was the original function, which is negative six. So the numerator is negative six, subtract negative six. So negative six, subtract negative six, all divided by h. So make sure you have the limit notation because we want to evaluate the limit later on. So the limit, the numerator is zero, the denominator is h, and so zero divided by anything is zero. Now we know previously that we talked about the limit properties, the limit of just a number, a constant, is just that same constant. So the limit of zero is zero. So we just calculated the derivative of this function f of x. f prime of x, the limit is always zero, so the derivative is always zero, no matter what x is. So now let's calculate the slope of the tangent line at x equals four. So this is the derivative. This will tell us the slope of the tangent line at any x value. The derivative is always zero, no matter what x is, because there is no x in the function for this derivative. So the slope of the tangent line at x equals four is zero. It's the derivative evaluated at four for your x value. There is no four to plug in for to this derivative because there is no x in the derivative. So the y value is zero. All right, number two, f of x equals negative three x plus four. And we want to find out what is the slope of the tangent line at x equals negative one. So we know that this function is a linear function because x is raised to the first power. Let's calculate the derivative in the exact same way as we did the previous problem. So the derivative of f of x is using the definition f prime of x limit as h approaches zero of the difference quotient f of x plus h subtract f of x all divided by h. So let's see what we get this time. We actually have an x that we're actually plugging into this time. So f of x plus h, you take all the x's from your function and replace them with x plus h. So negative three, times x plus h, and then you add four. So this is the first part, f of x plus h. It's negative three times the x that we plugged in was x plus h plus four. Subtract f of x, so subtract the original function. Subtract negative three x plus four, all in parentheses, because you want to subtract the whole function. And then remember, it's a difference quotient, so you want to divide the entire numerator by h. So now we need to do a little bit of algebra in the numerator. So distribute the negative three through the parentheses to remove the, all the parentheses and also distribute the negative through the second set of parentheses. So the derivative is the limit as h approaches zero, negative three x minus three h plus four plus three x subtract four in the numerator, all divided by h. Now collect like terms. Notice you have several terms that will cancel out. This is very common with the difference quotient. Negative three x plus three x, that's zero. Four, subtract four, that's zero. 
the only terms that you have left over will all have h. So you have a negative 3h is the only term that's left. It has an h in common. So you can cancel out the h's from the numerator and denominator. And what's left over is negative 3. The limit as h approaches 0 of negative 3, and that again is just limit of a number, a constant, is just the same number. So the limit of negative 3 is negative 3. So that's the derivative. f prime of x is negative 3. So that means the derivative, or the slope of the tangent line, or the slope of the curve, is negative 3 no matter what x is, because there is no x in this function for the derivative. So in other words, if you want to find the slope of the curve at x equals negative 1, you plug negative 1 into your function, the derivative, f prime of negative 1, is always negative 3, because there's no negative 1 to plug into. It's just always negative 3. So f prime of negative 1 is negative 3, and that's the slope of the tangent line, or slope of the curve, for this function, f of x. Number 3. This time we're going to have a quadratic function. So f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 3x subtract 1, and we want to find the slope of the tangent line after we calculate the derivative. Find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2. So again, it's going to seem like all these steps are very similar because we're just repeating finding the slope of the tangent line using the limit of the difference quotient. So the derivative of f of x is f prime of x, limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, the difference quotient. So again, you have to calculate what each part of this difference quotient actually is. f of x plus h, replace all the x's with x plus h. So this time it's going to be a little bit more work, a little bit more algebra. So that would be negative 2 times x squared, that's negative 2 times x plus h in parentheses squared, plus 3 times x, well the x is replaced with x plus h, so 3 times x plus h in parentheses, subtract 1, and then subtract f of x, which is the original function. So subtract this entire function, subtract negative 2x squared, plus 3x, subtract 1, all goes in parentheses because you want to subtract the entire thing, and again, all divided by h because it's a difference quotient. So again, you have a lot of simplifying to do. So you have 3 times x and 3 times h. You also have this negative that's distributed to all three terms of f of x after you distribute. And if you want to calculate x plus h all squared, you have to use FOIL because it's x plus h times x plus h. So f prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0, negative 2 times, what do you get after you multiply x plus h times x plus h? It's x squared plus xh plus xh, or 2xh, plus h squared. So now you have to take negative 2, distribute to all three of those terms. 3 times x was 3x, 3 times h is 3h, subtract 1, and then change all the signs for f of x because the negative sign is being distributed. So plus 2x squared, subtract 3x, plus 1. And so, and then all divided by h. So now distribute the negative 2 through the first set of parentheses. So f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0. Negative 2x squared, minus 4xh, minus 2h squared. And then all the other terms stay exactly the same, all divided by h again. So now this is the part where all the terms, except for the terms that have h, will all cancel out. Negative 2x squared plus 2x squared, that's 0. Um, 3x, subtract 3x, that's 0. Subtract 1 plus 1, that's 0. So the only terms that are left over are the ones that have h's, which are negative 4xh minus 2h squared, and you have a 3h left over. And again, this is all divided by h. So let's keep going. The derivative f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0. And we just came up with this expression for the difference quotient. Notice that all the terms have an h in common. So that means you can factor it out as a GCF, our greatest common factor. So if you factor out h, you'll have negative 4x left minus 2h plus 3 in the numerator. And you still have this h in the denominator. So now you can cancel out or simplify because there's an h divided by h, and that's just 1. So what's left over is the limit as h approaches 0, negative 4x, subtract 2h, plus 3. So now keep in mind, this is now a polynomial function because your variable is x. So you can replace all the h's with 0. So negative 4x minus 2 times 0 
plus 3. So notice the limit notation drops because we're now substituting in 0 for the h. And so negative 4x plus 3 is all that's left over. And that is what's called the derivative of this function f of x. f prime of x is negative 4x plus 3. So now this is the first time we can actually calculate the slope of the tangent line where we actually can plug in the x value. We want to find out what's the slope of the tangent line when x equals 2. You plug 2 into the derivative. It's f prime of 2, negative 4 times 2 for the x, plus 3. So negative 4 times 2 plus 3 is negative 5. That's the slope of a tangent line at x equals 2. So if you were graphing this function and you drew a tangent line at x equals 2, the slope of that line would be negative 5. Okay, number 4. This time the function is a rational function. f of x equals 1 divided by x subtract 2 and find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 0. So this is going to get a little bit more complicated with all the algebra. We want to find the derivative f prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That's the same definition for the derivative. This time, though, it's going to be fractions. So you have x plus h that you're replacing for the x. So 1 divided by x plus h, subtract 2, that's your f of x plus h, minus the original function, which was 1 divided by x minus 2, and it's also divided by h. So we're going to work in the numerator, just like we did in the last few examples. The only way we can subtract these two different fractions is to find a least common denominator, or an LCD. So you have x plus h minus 2, that's one denominator, and you have x minus 2, that's another denominator. You need an LCD that, can, that is using both of these denominators. So the LCD is x plus h minus 2, that factor, times x minus 2. That's your LCD. So now the next step, how do you subtract two fractions? You need to rewrite both fractions so they have the LCD. So rewrite the first fraction, so that's your denominator, x plus h minus 2 times x minus 2, that's the LCD. And the other fraction is x plus h minus 2 times x minus 2. So now the next step, you just changed the denominator to be this LCD. So let's figure out, what do you need to change the numerator so that the fraction stays the same? It's an equivalent fraction. So x plus h minus 2, that factor was already there. You are missing the x minus 2. So multiply the numerator by x minus 2. So 1 times x minus 2 is x minus 2. And same thing with the other fraction. The other fraction had an x minus 2. It was missing the x plus h minus 2 factor. So take the numerator and multiply by x plus h minus 2. So you get x plus h minus 2 in the numerator for that second fraction. And again, it's all divided by h still. So now, once you have common denominators, you can make it one fraction. You can keep the same denominator, so keep the LCD, x plus h minus 2 times x minus 2. You subtract the numerators now. So x minus 2 subtract the other numerator, which was x plus h minus 2 in parentheses. All right, we're getting there. Distribute the negative through that second set of parentheses. So you'll have minus x, minus h, and plus 2. So x minus 2 minus x, minus h, plus 2, all over the LCD, x plus h minus 2 times x minus 2. And again, it's all over h still. Now, notice that you have some terms that cancel out. You have an x, subtract x, that's 0. Negative 2, plus 2, that's 0. So all that's left is negative h, all over your LCD. And then it's still over h, all over h. So now you may be wondering, we've already combined all the like terms and we came up with just the term of h. How do we go any further than this? Well, what do you do when you have a fraction divided by another fraction? Because h divided by 1 is another fraction. You take the denominator and you multiply by the reciprocal. So the numerator stays the same, negative h divided by the LCD. And you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, which is times... This is h over 1. The reciprocal would be 1 divided by h. So now the problem is you can't find out the limit until you simplify this h divided by h issue. So h divided by h, that just cancels out or simplifies. So you have h divided by h, that will cancel out. And so what's left over is a negative 1 divided by this LCD stays. So negative 1 divided by x plus h minus 2 divided by x minus 2. 
So now that you canceled out the h divided by h issue, you can plug in 0 in for the h. So negative 1 is the numerator, so we're plugging in, so drop the limit notation, x plus 0 minus 2 times x minus 2. That's x minus 2 times x minus 2. And so x minus 2 squared in the denominator and negative 1 in the numerator. That's the derivative. It's negative 1 divided by x minus 2 all in parentheses squared. So now going back to the original question, find the derivative. We did. Find out the slope of the tangent line when x equals 0. So now once you have the derivative, you can find the slope of the tangent line by plugging 0 into the derivative. So the derivative f prime at 0 is negative 1 divided by 0 minus 2 all squared. So the denominator is 4 and the numerator is negative 1. So the derivative at 0 is negative 1 fourth. So that's the slope of the tangent line at x equals 0. The slope would be negative 1 fourth for that tangent line. All right, let's try one more. Number 5, let's take this function f of x, which is a radical function. Square root of x plus 3, find out the derivative, and also find out what's the slope of the tangent line at x equals 4. So again, we're going to start off the problem exactly the same way. The derivative of f of x is f prime of x. That's the notation for the derivative. Limit of the difference quotient as h goes to 0. So now you have to do all the algebra. Replace the x with x plus h. So we're placing this x inside the square root with x plus h. So square root x plus h plus 3 is the last part. Subtract the original function, which is subtract this entire square root of x plus 3 in parentheses. And now simplify the numerator. So you have square root x plus h plus 3. Distribute the negative. So you'll have negative square root of x and negative 3 all divided by h. So notice that the 3 and you'll have negative 3, so those will cancel out. You'll have square root x plus h, and you'll have a minus square root of x left over in the numerator, h in the denominator. And so now you might be wondering, can we get an LCD? Well, there's no fractions involved. Can we factor out an h? Well, there's no factoring to do. How do you simplify this when you have radicals or square roots? Well, the trick is f prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of this fraction. You multiply by 1 in a very creative way. So you multiply by what's called the radical conjugate or the conjugate radical. So you take the numerator and you change the sign between the two terms or the two radicals. So you have square root x plus h plus square root x. That's what we're going to multiply by in the numerator. And we have to do the exact same thing in the denominator. So that way, we're not changing the function. We're not changing what the expression is. This is just 1. So let's see what we get when we multiply this all out. So you have square root x plus h times square root x plus h. You have square root x plus h times square root of x. So square root of x times square root of x plus h. You also have the other two multiplications. Negative square root x times square root x plus h, that's this one, negative square root x, square root x plus h, and then you have square root of x times square root of x. So it'll be negative square root x times square root of x. And then the denominator, you would be h times this entire denominator. So h times square root x plus h plus square root of x. So when you foil the numerator, notice that the two middle terms cancel out. You have positive square root x times square root x plus h, and you have the opposite square root x times square root x plus h. These are exactly the opposite of one another, so cancel those out. That's zero. And so now notice you also have square root of x plus h times itself. So that means you have square root of x plus h squared. And then same thing here. You have square root of x times square root of x. That's square root of x squared because you have two of them. Keep the denominator exactly the same. So we still have the limit as h goes to zero. So limit as h goes to zero. Well, what happens when you square a square root? They cancel out or simplify. So you have x plus h left over. So that gets rid of the square root. And you also have the square root of x squared. Well, the square root and square will cancel each other out. And you just have x left over. So notice we don't have any square roots in the numerator anymore. You have x plus h minus x. The x's will cancel out. because that's, that's just 0. Keep the denominator exactly the same. Don't worry about the denominator at all.
And so you, all that you have left in the numerator is just an h. And what you have in the denominator is h times the radical conjugate that we had earlier. Well, notice if you keep the denominator factored, if you keep this h factored out, you can now cancel out the h. h divided by h is 1. And so you have 1 in the numerator. Keep the limit notation. And then in the denominator, you have square root of x plus h plus square root of x. And so now, after you cancel out the h's from the last step, you're still trying to find out what this limit is as h gets really small. So try plugging in h is equal 0 now. So if you plug 0 in for the h, you have 1 divided by x plus 0 inside that square root plus square root of x. And so square root of x plus square root of x gives you 2 square root of x's, and the numerator is just 1. So this is the derivative. f prime of x is 1 divided by 2 times the square root of x. And now we can actually calculate the slope of the tangent line when x equals 4. So if you want to find the slope of the tangent line, you need the derivative, which is 1 divided by 2 square root of x. Now plug in x equals 4. To find out the derivative evaluated at 4 is 1 divided by 2 times square root of x, which is now square root of 4. And so the denominator is 1 divided by 2 times 2, or 4. That's the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the tangent line at x equals 4 is 1 fourth. Now I know what you're thinking. These last two problems, these last three problems in that example was extremely long because we were doing a lot of algebra. We didn't actually use the limit process until the very last step. A lot of that was using algebra. Well, in the next section, we're going to develop what's called differentiation rules, rules that will help us find derivatives very quickly for various types of functions that do not involve limits. However, for now, we're going to use the limit process to understand various applications of the derivative. So the first application we're going to talk about is called the non-existence of a derivative. When does a derivative not exist for a function? The existence of the derivative depends on the existence of the limit because the derivative is a limit of the, of the difference quotient. So if you want to find out the derivative at x equals a, you want to find out if this limit exists. f prime of a is the derivative if it exists. Evaluate at x equals a. It's the limit as h goes to 0. Take all the x's from your derivative and re replace them with a. So f of a plus h minus f of a all divided by h. If this limit exists, that means the derivative does exist and you can find the slope of the tangent line or slope of the curve or instantaneous rate of change. But if this limit does not exist at x equals a, then you say that the function does not have a derivative or f of x is non-differentiable at x equals a, and that's f prime of a, whatever that value is for the derivative or this limit does not exist. These are the three types of points where the derivative at x equals a does not exist. So number one, we've seen this type of problem before. If the function is not continuous at x equals a, you can't find the derivative at x equals a. So here's the graph for a function that's not continuous. So you have this graph that has a jump discontinuity, or it may just have a hole in the graph, or it may have a vertical asymptote. If you're approaching one value from the left and you're approaching a different value from the right, then the two-sided limit we knew earlier in the class does not exist. And since the derivative is related to the limit using a two-sided limit, if that limit does not exist, you can't find the derivative. So since this two-sided limit does not exist because you're approaching two different values, the derivative does not exist. So the function is non-differentiable at x equals a because it's not continuous at x equals a. Okay. Second reason, if the graph has what's called a corner or a cusp in the graph at x equals a, then the function does not have a derivative at x equals a. So here's what a graph of a corner or a cusp looks like. So you have some graph, y equals f of x. It looks like the graph juts in to this sharp point, which is called a corner or a cusp, and then it just juts out very quickly. It's not a nice gradual curve. It doesn't gradually increase and gradually decrease. It juts into this point and it juts out. That's called a corner or a cusp. And the derivative at x equals a, where that corner or cusp occurs, does not exist. And so the function is non-differentiable at x equals a. 
And then the third case where the function is not differentiable is where you have a vertical tangent line at x equals a. So in this case, you have a curve, but at x equals a, if you draw a tangent line, the tangent line is a vertical tangent line. And what's the slope of a vertical line? It's undefined. So that means the derivative at x equals a does not exist because there is no slope that's defined at x equals a. And so the function is non-differentiable at x equals a if your tangent line is a vertical line. So those are the three ways that that limit for the difference quotient to calculate the derivative does not exist. Discontinuities, a corner or a cusp, or a vertical tangent line. So this finished up our video on the derivative using the limit of a difference quotient. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about basic rules of derivatives.